Hey, welcome back to The Past is Alive, everybody. Recently, my brother Eric and I took a trip down to Morgantown, West Virginia in search of baseball cards and retro toys. And we had a lot of stops mapped out. And our first one was this um, antique mall slash retro gaming store. They advertised online that they had trading cards and also old toys. So the place is called Retro Teak. As you can see, there's a lot of antiques right when you walk in there, an old television, uh, some random knickknacks, there's some artwork on the wall. A uh, shelf full of different things as well. Got some Star Wars stuff up top there, newer stuff, and then uh, some older lunch boxes down below. I think I see a cast with a ghost lunchbox. Also, a bunch of different uh, old pop culture glasses there. If you're wondering why I'm talking over the sound effects, it's because this place had a very, very loud radio that was blasting trumpet music. It was very obnoxious and didn't want to get hit with the copyright again, so. There's some old wax boxes there. See an American Gladiators box and also Voltron. Not exactly what we were looking for. Some vinyl there on the shelf. A lot of random stuff thrown in this store. Very low lighting in here as well. And then I stumbled across this shelf. There's an old uh, 18 board game. Also a Team NT figure, Napoleon Bonafrog. I think he was four bucks, which isn't too bad of a price for a loose Turtles figure without accessories. There's a wrestling figure there. I think he was four or five bucks. And then uh, another TMNT figure, Mondo Gecko with a skateboard. I think he was like eight bucks or ten bucks. You could buy him brand new for like thirty on the card. There's a TV tray there, a six million dollar man board game. I think that was uh, sealed in the plastic, which is pretty neat. Sell for a decent amount of money on eBay. Star Wars uh, figure there in the box. Some other stuff too. Kept looking around. There's a wall full of older punk band T-shirts there. And then uh, this place definitely hosts, hosts live music as well. There's a stage over on the right. Uh, tons of vinyl, some old movie posters. I had to really adjust uh, the brightness of my camera here because it was like being in a closet. It was so dark in there. You can barely see anything. And then my brother called my attention over to the toy section and he found a real Ghostbusters retro action figure from 2010 on Winston Zeddemore. Marked at 38 bucks. Instantly, I was like, uh, it's too expensive, it should be 20 or less. And then looking around more, came across a Mark McGuire starting lineup figure. Not the ones that Kenner made, but a newer one. The bubble's all busted out on that, I think it was about three bucks. And some more Star Wars figures in the card there. And here's a little tote full of wrestling figures. These were $10 a piece. Usually when I see older, older wrestling figures, they're always five. Most of them always have significant paint loss. This next thing is pretty cool. It's a Wolverine lap display. Never seen one of those before. 65 bucks for that, which I thought was pretty steep. It was like 25 or 30 bucks, which I think it should be. Um, maybe I, I would have bought it. And there's a bin full of older Motu figures from the 80s. Six dollars a piece. There's a Dick Tracy figure there in a bag. I think he was five or six bucks. You can see that guy's got some really loose legs there. It's one thing you have to watch out for with the older G.I. Joes and He-Man Masters of the Universe figures. The legs and arms, they can become very, very loose. Especially if you're looking to display them, not worth it to pay a bunch of money for figures you can't display. Some more wrestling figures in there. About five boxes usually going right for older Masters of the Universe figures. Unless you find some with accessories, then obviously we're talking more money. Especially if you find like a Skeletor or He-Man. Then you could potentially be looking at 50 bucks plus, depending on the condition overall. And then over here is an X-Men um, mini Flexums made by Creepy Crawlers in the 90s. And those were pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever seen those before back when I was younger. Couldn't find a price tag on those. I'm guessing they were at least $20 or more. So I'm still looking around trying to find something. Back to the wrestling figures again. There's a thumb wrestler. Those are, you can pick those up for a couple bucks on eBay. And they usually always have significant uh, paint wear. Shouldn't pay any more than a few bucks. I think that one was $10 too, which seems drastically overpriced for something like that. Nothing in those totes over there. Still looking around though, trying to find anything. 
Uh, there's some X-Men figure on figures on the card there. I think those are 10 or 15 bucks, which is generally the going rate for X-Men figures. There's an Iron Man figure as well. The cards on those are kind of busted up. Back to the Winston again. 38 bucks just seem way too high. There's one that sold on uh, eBay in November for less than 20. I've seen um, lots of four of those figures sell on eBay for under 60 bucks. People have them listed on there now for 7,500 bucks, but they're obviously not selling. So never particularly really liked that uh, that toy line too much. They look more like dolls instead of action figures. So I never really got two into those. I think I have one or two of them. An old ET uh, novelty item there, pretty neat. Another random bin of figures. They just had them laying on, uh, strewn all over the place in, in this uh, store. But I can definitely tell that uh, overall they were doing, they were ba basing everything off eBay. Wasn't hard to to realize that right off the bat. In stores like this, they gotta pay their bills. They gotta pay rent, so. Obviously, you can afford to sell stuff a little cheaper on eBay. You know, like paying fees on there instead of actually paying your rent. You know, versus having a store. So that's understandable, but I'm not buying toys. I'm looking for deals. You know, if I wanted to you know, pay eBay prices, I'd buy stuff online. And a lot of times, get in better condition. There's a bin full of random Barbies and dolls. Most of the time, when I'm looking for older toys and I find good deals, I usually buy them just to sell them to buy toys that I actually want. Collect toys, you know, buy toy lines that I actually collect. Here's a Land of the Lost figure that was four dollars. He liked that show back in the day. Uh, there's an Egon Ghostbusters figure from Slimed Heroes series. If you find those new on the card and they're they're unpunched, you can easily get a hundred bucks for one of those. I need to still collect that set. There's a lot of wrestling figures in these uh, these bins too. All, uh, all in Ziploc bags there. I think most of them were around 10 bucks, maybe a little, a little bit less. So there's a ton of wrestling inventory there, wrestling figure inventory, which is kind of cool. I was never a huge wrestling fan, never really got too into uh, the toys. Have I still have some from my childhood, but um, I think I, I bought some close to the end of my, uh, my toy days when I was younger. I'm gonna do a video here soon on uh, rating my parents' attic for my childhood toys. So you'll see some wrestling figures in there. So they, they had a pretty good selection, but uh, yeah, they were all 10 bucks or more. Some were, you know, 20 bucks. And then there's a lot of uh, wrestling figure fans on on here that watch these videos. So that's why I try to go through them one at a time and just show you what they had there. If you live close to Morgantown or or in the area, maybe you want to go in there and pick some up. This area is particularly very, very dark, so that it really turned up the uh, adjust the, the brightness on my camera for this one. We were at that point, we were directly next to this uh, speaker that was still blasting this trumpet music. It was so loud, Eric was annoyed because there was no baseball cards there, so I was trying to frantically dig through everything to try to try to find like a diamond in the rough but wasn't going too well as you can see best thing i found was that uh real ghostbusters figure but i wasn't going to pay 38 bucks for it if it was 20 i would have bought it and i like to give uh small businesses like this my money but at this point if they're overcharging then what's the point you know so really couldn't find anything else in that toy section so I started making my way over to the front more and then uh, saw this old Viewmaster in the showcase. You can barely see it because it's so freaking dark. But uh, there's an old Viewmaster, I'm not really sure what the tag they had on there was but they also had two packs of old Viewmaster reels. They had a, a Masters of the Universe one, He-Man, and also a She-Ra one if you remember that as well. The She-Ra one was six dollars, that was on top. So I'm guessing the He-Man one was probably around the same price. Which really isn't too bad of a deal at all whatsoever. Especially for stuff like that from the 80s. But at the same time, it's not really something I'm looking for uh, or in the market for. So I uh, passed those up. And then at that, at that point in time, we decided that we couldn't find anything in there and started to head out. Overall, the store is worth checking out. Especially if you collect older wrestling figures. But definitely make sure you bring your night vision goggles and probably a pair of earplugs because you will definitely need both of them in here. Let me know down in the comments what you liked in this video, what you would have bought, and I'll see you guys next time.